So uh, we're still having a few participants pop in here, but let's get started. Okay, editing. Uh, before we dive in, of course, I really just wanted to recap um, the past few weeks. Um, you all have been working on your treatments and concepts, I'm sure. Um, most of you have sent things to me and um, I think you're starting to narrow it down. So a lot of you are much further in the process already. Um, those of you that haven't written one or come up with a concept yet, please don't drop it. It's still something that we can move forward with. Um, so if you've got it in the works or in your head, remember, put it down on paper. Even if it's that one sentence, what is it about? That's the main thing. What is your concept? What is the video about? And then why do we need to see it? And how are you going to do it? That's the treatment. Many of you have um, moved beyond that and started recording. So uh, you started recording with a lot of the tips that we talked about. Um, and those of you that um, popped in last Thursday also um, for Amanda and Jill's um, presentation, um, we're gonna go over a little bit of that again, just to reinforce some of it, but um, that is the production phase. You are recording video at this point. Um, and some of you are actually recording video that you're gonna use in your project. Um, but how do you put it all together? And that's where we are today. We're gonna figure out the post-production. So before we do, um, I need to break it down into the, the two worlds Kevin and I operate in because in professional production, um, there are, as most of you I'm sure are aware, um, the Apple platforms, product, and all the rest. So um, if you've got an iPhone, you're, you're operating in the Apple world. If you have a Macintosh laptop or desktop, same. Um, if you have a phone that's not an iPhone, then most likely it runs on the Android operating system. And that's really everything else. For PCs and laptops, um, they're a Windows operating system as well. So we'll talk about both of those things. Um, but we're going to begin with, uh, I'm going to dive into the iPhone part of it first. So I need to stop sharing the PowerPoint. Hello, everyone and get you onto my iPhone because I'm really going to try to start this from uh, scratch and, and many of you are probably already beyond this point but I just want to make sure that we have everybody caught up. So if you have an iPhone, well so what we what you guys talked about last week some of you that um, we're here last week, uh, talked about how to edit a clip that in, in the case of something that you had just recorded and you started talking, right? um, but you don't want the first part of what you said to appear in the clip. You are gonna need to Take that clip, see if I can get you to see. Um, oh, you're not seeing my the little timeline thing, are you? Let me get the, so Rich, can you also show where you go on the phone to find these things specifically? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, as soon as I figure out why, it's only sharing my video output and not the rest of my screen. Oh, there it is, okay. Yes, so to answer Jill's question, on an iPhone, um, mine might not be the best example because I have three billion things on here. Uh, there is the camera app which you probably are aware of, and the Photos app, which is where they all go after you've taken video or a photo. If you're looking for it though, in my case, I've got them grouped into a folder. You don't have to worry about any of that. 
my trick is, can you all see me also? Am I appearing in the screen? Um, there are two other ways on an iPhone to find things. Uh, if you swipe down, it sort of closes your screen again. And you just see the notifications you were getting. Um, if you swipe up, you get all these other little alerts and things. If you, oops, sorry. If you go, start in the middle of the screen, it takes a light touch, I think, but if you start in the middle of the screen and swipe quickly, you'll get the search bar. So do you all see the search bar at the top? That's where I, because I have so many things, 10 years ago, I tried to organize in folders, but I finally gave up. I literally just search the name of the thing. So if you're looking for your camera, if you hold down, like I said, start in the middle of the screen and swipe it down, and you get the search bar, and then just type in cam. There's your camera app right there. Uh, you just click on that, and that'll open up your app. Anyway, it's behind me. And the same with photos. Just start typing it, it's gonna see a bunch of pH things. If you wanna type the whole word, it's all gonna be there. And then just click on the photos app and that's where all the photos are living. Um, so once you do that, if you've taken, so let's go back. If you've taken, if you go find your camera, click on camera, now I'm ready to start recording something. And of course, by now, most of you know to click on the uh, video function on that little tab there. And then you're ready to start recording the big red dot. Um, once you've done that, I'll record this one, two, three, and then tap it again and it stops recording. Now that's gonna go into your camera app, which you can immediately get to from the camera with that little box right next to the red record bar, uh, button. That's gonna take you right to the camera where it just recorded to. So there's the little clip I just recorded. Now, if I click on that, um, click. There's an edit button right at the bottom of your screen. If you click on edit, that gives you the opportunity, as we, some of you discussed last week, to lop off the beginning and the end of this. And you do that by holding down that little um, timeline. You're seeing that bar at the bottom. The beginning of it, I'm pressing it and holding right now. And see how it activates the yellow and I'm going in one second, two second, three seconds. Let's just chop off the first second. So if I hold, press and hold it to one second there, I just cut off the first sentence. And then I'm gonna hit done. And that gives me the chance to either save that video just like that, or save it as a new clip. So I'll have both, the one I just shot, and now the new one that locked off the beginning. So for example, if we go back to photos and in this one where I'm talking I probably said something like okay let's get ready now and I'm not ready to I didn't start whatever I'm going to say yet so I want to cut that first part off there's also a play button next to that little timeline just so you can hear what you're sure what you're doing. to do a test this new Oops. footage so Let's say that's where I want to start. So my timeline, you can just see that white bar. That's right where I just stopped playing. So now I'm going to press that yellow head, and bring it into about where that bar was, and then hit play and see if I got the right spot. A different phone that I have not used before. Now I want to do it to about there. So I'm going to move it a little further and then hit play. So like to talk a little bit about one. So that seems like that's where I wanted it to start. And I'm going to go through that whole thing again. So there's the whole timeline. Oh, I've already hit edit. Let's cancel that. 
I hit edit, which is on, on my phone, at the t it says edit at the top of the screen. So I just tap that button. And that takes me to this screen. So you can see that bar at the bottom, the time, well, I'll be calling the timeline. I tap it once. Uh, to, to activate, so it's got that yellow border all around it. Click on the beginning part of it and then drag it to where I think I really do want it to start. And I didn't memorize how many seconds in that, that I liked before, so I have to go through that whole process again. I just guessed, but when you hit the play button, okay, you can hear it. So then I want to take it a little, another second in, maybe to there. Nope, still didn't have it. Some of this is trial and error. You're just going to have to try it. So, I don't I got to edit out that telephone. Uh, talk a little bit about. Then I went too far, so I can click and hold again and drag it back. So I'm happy with where it's going. Once I am, and I hit play. Used before. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what I was doing today. Say I wanted to stop there. I hit that pause button again and then go get the end of it. Now I'm going to drag it back to where I think I want it to end. So now I'm going to play the whole thing. A different phone that I have not used before. So I'd like to talk a little bit about what I'm doing today like to show you by presenting these images. Excuse me, Rich? Yes. Rich, there are a couple people in the waiting room wanting oh, to get in. So, yeah, I blocked everybody. Let's see. Sorry about that, guys. Glad you could join us. So let me do that one more time. I'm going to cancel what I was just doing. I'm going to discard those changes. Again, from the top, I'm at my iPhone. There's my busy screen. I don't know where my camera's stuff is. So <clears throat> I just swipe down from the center. Gives me that search bar. I type in camera, and there is camera. But I want to find my photos. So I type in photos. There's my photos. And I happen to have them all in a folder here, but you don't have to worry about that. And I want to edit this clip. So I click on edit at the top of the screen, and that brings me to a timeline that I can edit. You can either start playing it. To do a test with new footage. And I want to start it right there. I don't want to hear the rest of the stuff I said because I wasn't ready yet. So I click at the beginning of the clip when it all turns yellow, and then I can drag it in, say about five seconds is where I wanted it to really start, somewhere in there. And then play it, hit the play button. But to do a test with new footage. And I want to end there, so I go to the end, click and drag to about where I think I ended. This is a seven second clip, I guess. To do a test with new... Oh, no, it wasn't seven seconds. To do a test with new footage that I record... Record in. But to do a test with new footage that I'm recording with a different phone that I have not but to do a test Let's make a really short one but to do a test with new footage footage this isn't a precise way to do it but you're it's a way to get all the junk out of the beginning and the end of your clip but to do a test with new footage that I'm recording with a different phone. Say it, say the word. <laughs> when I'm done, when I'm happy with that, then you click the done button. 
and you have a chance to either save that video over top of it'll get rid of the one you had and only save that or you can keep the original and save this one as a new clip so now i have a new clip and i'm going back Uh, to find it and I put it in my recents folder, um, which is where everything is really going to be. So, yeah, Rich, you, Rich, you, Rich, you would do it. You would save it as a new clip because if you've shot an interview or yourself talking, you would want to keep all that other video, but you just want to take that new edited clip and make it its own new one, right? Definitely, good point. Um, we all, always talk about leaving things on the cutting room floor, but we still have those things. <laughs> Because you never know when you're going to need to go back and, and find something. Like if you had, I don't know, uh, somebody walk by in the beginning of your clip and you realize, oh, I don't want that person in the clip. I want to start with me talking. But then later um, you realize, wait, I knew that person. Who was that again? Well, you want to go back and look. So you want to keep your original footage too. So I really do um, always save it as a new clip. So that's what uh we do to for a very simple way to edit the beginning and the ending um out of a clip and it's pretty much the same on on whichever smartphone you're using that style that way of of cutting off the the tail and the head we'll, we'll call it of a timeline which is the word i'll be using and i'll talk about that later um, but for the clip so can, can I ask a quick question? Yes. How many of you are editing only on their phone? And it's okay if you are, we just want to kind of get a, get a sense of Jill, Jill and Carol and Kitty are editing on their phones. Okay. Now in the case, so let me, cause I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, it, it, pretty much looks like that or or do you want to get into a little more detail for if well, you're using android i mean i was going to concentrate more on the desktop application because that's consistent throughout the windows platform but okay no um, we can skip right over that because I, I was going to go to the editing on a, a laptop next on a mac and then and it'll pop back over to you but i just want to make sure um but if you, yeah. you do have an android phone and are trying to do just that thing just lop off the beginning and the end of a clip um it should look something like that if it's really frustrating and it's just not working we're going to say this over and over today please reach out to us yeah we're, yeah we're going to give you our both of our contact information and our inf all the information you guys can feel free to use it anytime you need okay so to the desktop now um oh First things first though, back to, I should probably go back to my phone here. Sorry about that. If you have the footage you need, now that's, the, the trick is now to get it to, um, if you're not gonna edit on your phone, um, oh wait, but you can. Let me, let me stay in the Apple world for a minute. If you have an iPhone and you want to edit on your phone and uh, that's how you're going to be editing beyond the beginning and the end of the clips, if you want to put two shots together, um, then what I use on, in, the I, in the Apple world on my phone is called iMovie. Some of you may have that already on your phone. Some of you may already use iMovie. But if not, I, I will just real quickly show you from the beginning uh, how to find that. So again, I'm going to swipe down from the middle uh, and do the search. I movie, all one word. And you can see that is what the iMovie icon looks like. If you don't have it on your phone, you click on the App Store. You may or may not know where that is. Mine happens to be right there on the screen. Um, but if I couldn't find it, same thing. I swipe down from the middle and type in app. There's my app store. And then in the search bar at the bottom right, I type in iMovie. 
that takes you to TikTok first because they're trying to rule the world currently. And then iMovie is the next one down and you would click on Get. It's a free app um, and then Get loaded onto your phone. Mine's already here, so that's why it says open. It's all ready to go. So I'm gonna do that. I opened, you can see I already brought in some test footage before, but I'm gonna start from the beginning. That plus sign, first thing on the top left, that means add. That's to add a new project. That's how the screen starts when you start with iMovie. So if you click on that, just tap it, that gives you the option. I'm not gonna talk about trailers, but if you have this and you have an iPhone and wanna have some fun, there's some neat little templates that they provide for you. Um, and they'll basically walk you right through it. And it makes like a movie trailer kind of template with your photos and video and music, it's fun. But we're gonna talk isn't, about- um, Can I, isn't this the same thing on the Mac? Yes. Does the Mac Absolutely. have the same thing? Absolutely, and, and I, I will go right from uh, back to the Apple world when we come back to me to talk about the same thing. Okay, so then I don't have to download it then. Okay, no problem. If you have it on your phone, you can edit on your phone. But if you have it on your laptop or desktop or want to put it on there, I would because you have I have it on my Mac already, so I'm just oh, yeah. going to leave it. Yeah, there's more you can do with it. Um, and and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But if it's on your phone and that's all you're going to use to edit and say no, that's perfectly fine. Um, I've done a ton of stuff with iMovie on my phone. So we're going to click on movie. Um, that popped right up, but sometimes that takes a while. Don't get discouraged. Um, I took, I unloaded a lot of stuff, so that would be faster. If you're like me though, and typically have 19,000 photos and videos, that might have taken a lot longer. So you have to wait for that to sort of build. Um, and it brings you to your photos, which is that photo app that I showed you before in the beginning. And here are some of the photos that are you know, most recently. Um, but uh, I, you can click on just the video tab there, and that's gonna be all just your video. So whatever I recently added in video is in there. Um, so again, there's that clip of me talking. So I just tapped it. And once again, you see those, the yellow border, same thing. You can move that the same way by clicking on that first thicker uh, border all the way to the left, which is the beginning of the clip. Same with the end, you can click on that and shorten it. Or if you're not sure what part of this you want and want to bring the whole thing in and just edit with it in iMovie, you don't have to do anything other than uh, just accept it. You click that. Um, oh, hang on. Let me play that first. I have. Yeah, I'm just gonna bring that whole thing in. I think. So I clicked it. I clicked the the um, check mark there. And so now it's gonna use that clip to create a movie when I click on the bottom, create movie. If I had several clips I know I wanted to bring in, uh, let's see, say I wanted that one, uh, I wanted that one, and I wanted this one. Oh, it didn't let me do it. Sorry, I guess you gotta start with just one. So I'm just gonna, pick the first one and hit create movie. So that brings it in and you see the video itself on the top and you see the clip and what I'm referring to as the timeline on the bottom. Again, it's that same timeline kind of thing. And if you click on it, and I'm basically clicking and moving it left and right on my screen, I'm just viewing what is in that clip. So same as before, there's a play button. This one happens to be just below the actual video up here. I click on that. I have no choice but to do a test. So I'm gonna stop it right there. So I hit that pause button, which is in the same position again as the play button. And I don't want the rest of that. Uh, so I'm gonna do the thing I showed you before. Um, instead of dragging it backwards though, in iMovie, if you look at the bottom, 
you see four words down there, split, detach, duplicate, and delete. Right where I stopped it, there's a playhead is what we're gonna call it, that long uh, white thin line. That's the playhead, that's where on the clip this video is. And I wanted to stop it there. I'm gonna split this from the rest of my video right now. So when I click on split, it makes it its own little video. So if I'm done, I don't want the rest, I can either tap on it and then hit at the bottom there, one of those other words, delete. And that just got rid of everything. If I realized, no, actually, I didn't want to do that. Thank goodness there's an undo button. And that is um, to the bottom right of the video. It's that loopy arrow. It means go back. So if you click that, that just undoes the mistake I just made. So I'm gonna leave that clip in there, but I wanna add another one. So now we use the plus button. And that brings me back. I wanna put a photo in there. So I'm just gonna grab a photo. Let's see. How about this nice flower. So I clicked on the flower, press the uh, plus button, and that brought that right in. So that's the next thing on my timeline. And we'll talk about timelines in a minute. Um, iMovie tends to think they know better than us, so it automatically put a transition between this shot and the flowers. It's what we call a dissolve. And that's that little symbol right there. But if I'm like, I, I did not want to dissolve there, you can click on that and tell it what you wanted. And there's, you can slide it, there's different transitions. See how it slides in. But if I don't want any of that, I click on that symbol again and just click none. And that just makes a regular cut. And that's most of what I recommend everybody use. Cuts, um, it maybe dissolves. But anyway, at this point, I now have three shots in here. One of which, is just a continuation of the first shot. And all I did was edit in this photo of the flowers. If you click on that photo, it automatically brings you to the Ken Burns effect. So you can see when I play, it's automatically doing a little tilt up. You can control that if you click on that clip and you can see where it says position to start. I want it to be there. So I basically, using my you know, pinch fingers, if you're used to doing this kind of stuff with social media and things, um, you click with two fingers and then zoom out or in. And I want my flower to be centered right there to start. And then when I want it to end, you click on the, the next thing down pinch position to end, I want that to be like that so you can see both flowers. So now if I play that, I have to go back down to the timeline and click on the timeline and drag it around like what I was doing before and then hit play. And you can see what that the flowers are doing at my command. So those are all pretty advanced things that once you start getting into iMovie, you have the opportunity to, to explore. But for the purposes of what you guys are doing, if you shot a video and you're done, you just need to lop off the beginning and end to get it right, you do the first method. If you wanna put photos in there and you've got the iMovie app, you can start bringing in things like this um, to start adding more shots. Again, maybe I don't want this next part either. I want to add one more uh, flower shot. So you click the plus sign and that puts it right in. And now you're thinking, you know what? That dissolve does look nice between the flowers. I'm going to let them control me for a second and just leave it in there. So when you play it, um, and hopefully this is playing smoothly, you can just barely make out that little dissolve. But I'm not real happy with where it position the flower, so then you have to click on it again and put it where you really want it. Beginning and end. 
So those are just some quick ways to get clips into iMovie. The more um, time you spend on this, the more things you'll find. You can actually, if you click that plus sign, um, uh, there's other ways to add music over that. Um, if you're using a PowerPoint presentation and that's the graphics you want, I can show you, if you don't know this already, how to get graphics out of a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so let me show you that real quick. Using the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. I had on my screen. Yeah. So if I want to take this PowerPoint presentation, here it is when it's not slides aren't slideshows and playing. It's just where you write your PowerPoint. You can actually. I'm sorry, that wasn't it. Parts of my screen are blocked by this sharing thing. Somewhere in here. Oh, export. Now, again, I'm working on a Mac. <clears throat> so, file export lets you take your slides and make graphics out of them. And I use file format JPEG. I'm going to make it this size that it defaulted to, um, just the current slide. And I'm going to click on export. And so that saved it to my desktop. And now I've got that slide ready to use in iMovie on the desktop. So if you can still see my desktop, are you all seeing my desktop? iMovie, there's the little iMovie symbol. I think we're just seeing the PowerPoint right now, Rich. Oh, really? Oh, I thought I shared. Um, well, let me see if, if I click on iMovie, tell me if the iMovie application shows up. Yeah. You see it? Yeah, that's okay. it, yep. So you can see it's pretty much the same thing. Create new is that plus sign. I want to make a movie, not a trailer. It's up to you to have fun with later. The first thing you need to do here is import media. So you click on that. And now, in the case of what I just made, I'd have to go find that uh, where it saved it to. I thought it was the desktop. It wasn't public documents. No. I don't know where I where that put that PowerPoint. So I would go back and do it again. Export and this time make sure I know where it's going. Yeah. That's well, I actually had this problem last night. I kept saving it to export and then I couldn't find it. This is where it goes. It should have gone right to my desktop, but you okay. can you can make you know you can tell it to go wherever you want. If you make a folder on the desktop, for example, say in my case I called it for share example, I'm gonna tell it this time to put it in there. Also, knowing what you called it helps. <laughs> so that's what I forgot, frankly. And again, I'm gonna change the file format from PDF. To JPEG, so JPEG is a graphic format. Again, I just want that current slide. I could save every slide or just the current slide. I'm going to keep it the size it defaults to, in this case, 1920 by 1080, and click export. So now when I go back to iMovie and I go to look for all this again, where I'm, oh, there it is, but I want it to be in the folder. 
So control where you put things. That's a very important lesson. Um, lesson three was name, the name of that particular graphic. So there's that graphic. So I want to bring things now into this project. So there's lesson three. Um, I'm also going to click shift or shift and click to get other clips in that I want to. Well, let's bring them all in. I'm going to import all. So here are all those clips. Here's the graphic. So I want that first. So I just click on that. And now click, hold, and drag down to the timeline. So now it's actually in my timeline. And you can see the video playing on the right side. Let me move myself out of the way here. And now I want to add another clip now because it's not on your phone. You, you can manipulate your, your um, mouse or your you know, trackpad or whatever a lot easier. You don't have to add a, use a plus sign to bring in anything. Everything is right here in this top left. These are all the clips I just brought in. So there's me talking again. And so if I know I only want that little part, I can control it the same way by clicking on the beginning and the end. It's new footage. That's all I want. But we're going to trim that even more once we bring it in. So now you can either use the plus sign or you can just drag, click and drag right down to your timeline. It's new footage that I record. Now, I don't want to say that part. Footage. I want to stop right at footage. So I'm letting it play. By the way, I'm using my space bar to start and stop. So when I want to play, I hit the space bar. Footage. And I hit the space bar again because I want to stop right there. And then, because I want it to end there. Oh, by the way, when you start, when your timeline starts to get long, this, um, you can see where I'm clicking and dragging, that changes the size of it. So I'm actually zooming out and then sort of. How are you doing that? Because we can't see your, your keyboard stroke or how you're doing that. Oh, you don't see the, I'm clicking on this. You don't see. No, it. we can't see that part, Rich. You got oh, to tell. No. Oh no, I, I, I see where, uh, on the setting, on the settings uh, well, tab. Well, it's next to that or, thing that says settings. Yeah, okay. You see that little. Yeah, now I see it, sorry. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you might have to move your Zoom stuff or collapse your. Uh, so anyway, so I want to now drag the end of that back to where I paused, which made that, that white vertical line there. That's how I knew where it was. Footage. There. Now, what's nice on the desktop version is if I wanted to keep talking, I would click that ending again and drag that back out. But I don't want to see me anymore. I'm going to cover me with another photo. So it happens to be a photo in here. So if I click on that photo, click, hold, and drag it down on the timeline on top of me. Now, if I back up a little bit with my mouse, or trackpad, and then click the space bar. Footage that I'm recording with a different phone than I. So you can see, but still hear me underneath it. So that becomes valuable when you've got graphics. Say, that was what I wanted to, I'm gonna get rid of that. I wanna put that over where I'm talking. So if you're talking about what's on your PowerPoint, you wanted to see you in the beginning, but then go to your PowerPoint, you can put that on top. So you still hear you talking, but now you're seeing the graph. Recording. So now I'd be saying, just what is different edit? phone that I have not used before. So that's where that's the next step in building these kind of if you get further in this process and want to start putting graphics over you talking, uh, iMovie on the desktop is a good way to start doing that because you can layer your video. Um, you can see it automatically did that Ken Burns thing again, and I don't want it to do that, so 
in that case, you have to, if you're not happy with that, you have to click on this button at the top, we call crop, crop button. And I don't want to use the Ken Burns effect. I can either click on crop to fill or just fit. In this case, it's both the same, it's the same size as the box here. Um, but that got rid of that Ken Burns effect, so it's not going to zoom or anything now. So if I go back again to my trackpad and just hit the space bar. But I'm recording with a different phone. Oh, sorry. But I'm recording with a different phone that I have not used. So that's how I would recommend if you're doing the kind of thing where you're on camera and then you're going to your PowerPoint presentation, you want to cut to the PowerPoint presentation, but still hear you talking, this is how I would do it. Drop it on top of the shot of me, wherever it makes sense for that piece to be. So once you're done with that, uh, real quick, say you're done with iMovie, if that's the end of my clip, I, that's the end of my video, I'm now done. I now need to get it out of here. I need to share it. File, share, can you share your screen again? Oh. You're just looking at me? Well, I'm, I'm on the, well, I guess the gallery, gallery view, so I see everybody. But. Can you see it now? Yeah. So in iMovie, file, share, put it here. Through all these options. So if you've already set this up to go straight to a YouTube channel, for example, or to Facebook, or to Vimeo, uh, something we use a lot, um, that's fine. But if you're not sure about any of that yet, you just want to save it as a file. And here is where you can name it. Just name it there. Um, go to next. This lets you put it where you want it to go. So I want to tell it this time on my desktop, I made the share folder. So I got to click on this thing to open all this up. So I'm going to tell it to go right into this um, folder and then hit save. And then that share test will just save right into that folder. You know it's done when I movie tells you it's done. But you can, if you can see the top right, there's a little pie thing there. Uh, yes, Dale. If you want to then lay some background music on top of something, is there a third layer you pop up on there, or do you replace yes. one of those layers? Yes, uh, let's see, I didn't put any music. I think what, what we're gonna do, Rich, is go through the presentation, and then if you can answer Dale's question first when okay. we go into the question section, we've got- um, uh, Absolutely, oh yeah, well, I'm sorry, I went. An hour and a half, so Dale, we'll have plenty of time for your question to talk about how to integrate music. Uh, absolutely, um, I will say, if I had music right here in front of me, I would just drag it down, and it would automatically put it under this, so you can see the, the sound and the, the video are combined in this clip. Um, music would just make a new music track or sound audio track underneath it. So absolutely. Um, so that's why iMovie is great for putting this kind of stuff together. It takes practice if you're not used to using it, but once you dive in, you know, you'll, you'll start to get the hang of it. It's, it's pretty intuitive. Um, it may not look like it right now, <laughs> but uh, I would have to spend a little more time. But um, I, I just recommend just giving it a shot. Okay, so, uh, oh, before I leave this part, that um, clip that I made was share test. It went right into this folder. I know because I'm going to click on date modified so it goes right to the top there. There, that's the thing I just did. Made a 12 megabit file. And this is now ready to be uploaded wherever you want to take it to YouTube or Facebook. Um, 
but if you double click it, there's the clip. It made it nice and big. You can see it filled the screen. That's why we left everything that size. So that's a really quick presentation on iMovie. Uh, let me come back here. So if you live in the PC world, um, I'm going to see if I can make sure. Oh, Kate's waiting. Sorry. Sorry, Kate. I don't know how long you were waiting there. I had covered up the participants. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay. So, Kevin, let's see if I can make sure you've got. Can I share my screen? You are in charge. Okay. So, again, so the. I don't know how many are doing this on an Android or some other non um, Apple phone, iPhone, but um, uh, the issue, and I'll, I'll be very upfront and, and get this out of the way, the, the good or bad part about the Android and non iPhone world is there's a lot of choices, you know, to download an app to be able to edit on it. So it's not, unfortunately, it's not like iMovie and I, you know, for, for iPhone or, or a desktop or a, and um, so there's a lot of different choices. If, if, again, we're gonna give our email out and our phone numbers and we can talk you through if you have specific issues or questions about the, um, either one, the Mac or the PC world or the Android world. Um, but for today's purposes, I'm going to concentrate on getting, um, showing you in the Windows world how this all works. So, um, are you seeing my desktop now? Yes. Okay. All right. So, I'm assuming that. If you're on a PC, laptop or desktop, you're probably on Windows 10. I'm sorry, I don't have an earlier version, but let me just show you if you can see this. So let me start. So you go down to the Windows icon. Now this is for the video editing uh, that comes with um, all PCs. So go down to the Windows icon. That shows you the programs and applications there. Go down to Video Editor. And you can make shortcuts to that too, or put it down in your, I call this the tray down here or the taskbar, whatever they call it. But you can put, you see, I have a lot of stuff down there. You can also drag that down there if you're going to, you can make a shortcut to this. Um, you're saying, okay, everyone's good with this, um, this view? Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, again, the other caveat is it's not as sophisticated as iMovie is. Yeah. In, in you know uh, that the Macs are so, but this this is fine for I think I think some of the videos that you guys are producing I think it's fine. Start a new video project. Click on that. You can name it. Okay. So for today we'll call it Share Test. Do, do you have a way to enlarge your screen at all? Are you full screen right now. I don't know. How does that? How do I do that? I'm actually seeing full screen, Rich. Okay, We're, we had some comments that it was a little. Is that is that a choice on the user's end instead of mine? Because I'm I'm doing my whole screen. I thought possibly. Um, Click on full screen. Uh, Zoom. No, uh, not you, Kevin. Uh, Kitty. Are you in full screen mode? I, yeah, I thought there was a way that the presenter could make it larger because I, I was on a presentation, somebody made it larger, but I maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, you could be right. Um, let me see. You can make certain applications zoom in, um, but mm -hmm. you're not even in one. You're in. Uh, the, well, you might oh, wait, I, I see a view yeah. option. I'm yeah. Option. yeah. You can and that, blow that up. 
Yeah. Okay. Let me try that. But you might not be able to control where it might just. Right. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Um, okay. Better. We all good. I think so. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, all right. So I, prior to this, I did a, um, and I am not full screen anymore on my end. So hang on. How did I do this? Sorry, guys. All of a sudden now I'm, for whatever reason, Oh, I, is it, is it I, I made everything really small on my end looking for a folder that I wanted to show. Um, it's funny because it still fills the screen. Yeah. It's still filling the screen on our end, Kevin. So I think you could just move forward as long as you can see what you're doing. Yeah, and I have to, I can't. That was, that was my issue. We can guide you. A little to the left. <laughs> a little to the left. No, I lost my, I lost the program. Hang on one second. Um, oh, <laughs> right, here we go. Okay, can you guys see me now? I mean, you, you see everything, right? It's just on my end where I was having yeah. a problem. Okay. All right, so um, I, we, I made the uh, new project, called it Share Test 1. And now I go over and I have to, um, already did that. I have to import some footage into, see this library? You see that, right? This ad, it says? Yes. Okay. So choose where your, Rich and I sort of, we call it assets or elements, meaning video clips or audio clips or anything like that. Um, there is, when you, I made a folder already on my desktop. Um, you can still see this, right? Yes. Okay. Assets for share video demo. So I have a bunch of stuff in there and I'm just going to copy all of those and then say open. And that's going to bring them into, it's going to import them into your project. Okay. So there are some video clips here that I've again, just pre-selected to make this for the demo, but in this, in this way, you know, it's a little different. As you can see, the whole sort of interface is different from the um, Mac, the uh, iMovie world, Mac world. I don't know. Let's say we want to do a, a title first. So if you go down to this, it says add title card. And there's a title card. Now you can edit that. You click on it. Okay, so you write, did you see, I had a right click on it and I'm going to edit the text. Um, stop me if you can't see something or don't understand something, but just for argument's sake, you go up to this upper right in there, you highlight it and then say, um, and let's say we don't want the blue background. So I'll do that, click over here and then we're gonna edit and it gives me, maybe I want it just white over black. So I have background and then I can choose a color. You can choose any color you want okay. and just say done. All right, so this, you'll see where, like Rich was showing with the progress bar and how you can edit some clips. You can see that there's a duration here of three seconds for a title. Okay, and that's where it is right now. I can make that different, but let, let's, for now, let's just keep it as that. Okay, so if I play this, hit the play, there's a rewind, or previous frame, and then a play button. So let me hit that. Okay, so that's how that, that's how that begins. Now I want to, I want to do some, again, these are pre-select, or pre-edited, I should say, or pre, kind of clipped out for this purpose. But let's say I want this clip of this woman, you simply drag it and put it next to it. So that's okay. all the same concept, click, hold, and drag. Yeah, exactly. I'm click, holding, and dragging into this. And this, they don't call it a timeline in, in this world. They call it a storyboard. So um, 
this is your mon this is how you play your video over here if you can see my mouse yes yes okay so this this is where this how you can do that so let's just for argument's sake at this point let's play this see what we have so far this is a picture of my graduation from high school okay so disregard the the numbers burnt in or, or, in with this video that's just it was an old clip of video i found disregarded that won't look like that normally it just happens to be actually part of the video with this woman's interview from a while ago all right so she's talking about high school so you can i can trim that like rich was doing before you can trim this although it's kind of pre-trimmed um again you right click on and let me just go back a step as you can see where I'm clicking through these, there's a little blue bar that tells you which one you've clicked. That's the one you're going to affect or trim or edit or anything you want to do. That's how you, that's how in this particular video editor application on Windows 10 lets you do that. So where the blue bar is highlighted, you right click on it, and then you have a bunch of choices. I'm going to say trim. Okay, so now you can play this. This is a picture. Of okay, let's just say we wanted to say this is a picture just for trimming sake. So I can drag this in this almost seven second clip. I can drag that anywhere. Let's keep that where um, these are the these are the editing piece um, points, by the way. This is actually where the this drags you through the beginning through the end of the video or anywhere in between that clip. Keep it there for a second. This is a, a picture. Okay, this is a picture. So I stopped it and you can use the mouse or I think, let me just make sure, I think you can use the space bar as well. <coughs> this is a picture. Okay, this is a picture. So say I want that part of the sentence and we, we just wanted to clip, trim this first clip to that. You simply grab the end, if you can all see this, you grab this little, and it, when you hover over it, it says what it is. You drag the end of the trim to the part where you just had her say, um, this is a picture, okay. this is a picture. Okay, so that will, while hitting the space bar again in this program, that will cycle through that. It will continue to play the in the beginning of the clip and the end of it as you've marked it here. Now I'm going to say done because that's the new duration. I, I just wanted to say this is the picture. Okay, so now down here, bring the video back to the beginning, slide it back with you. I, I, use, a, I use a mouse a lot and keyboard, but mouse for this. And now I'll play it again. This is a picture. Okay. Any questions so far? No? All right, I'm gonna keep going here. So these are the, it says project library, you know, these are the assets. Um, if I wanted to use a photo next, let's just say if that made sense at this point, and you want to show a photo, you simply drag it down. It's in there. It has nothing to do with this whole thing, by the way. That happens to be uh, at the Woodstock Live at the Woodstock um, mem not memorial uh, museum in upstate New York. But uh, you can go to this picture, and again, it's a three-second duration. I can change that. Let's say, and these will give you. You can either customize it by you know saying a, a certain amount of time, or you can pick a duration. Let's just say five and then say change. Okay, now this is five seconds, and you can see that if you'll notice in these, this storyboard view here, that first title card is three seconds, 3.0. The edited clip of the woman saying in this picture is two seconds and 13, or almost two and a half seconds. And then there's this photo. Now there's other things you can do with this photo, and I'll just do this real quickly, I think. Let me see. Um, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Go here and then hit motion. 
you can all see this. It got bigger, I'm guessing, in the in your view. Yes. Like Rich was saying, I won't go into the whole thing, but you can you can put a little movement on this photo um, by saying zoom in center. You can choose how this is, will happen, then you can say done. If you don't like the black bars on the side of the video, if it doesn't fit your um, your screen completely, like some photos won't, you can change that. And uh, let me just remember where that is. Filters, no, sorry. Uh, there's a way to do it, maybe it's over here. Just click on the photo. Yeah, uh, 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 in the timeline or up top? Oh, um, resize, sorry, resize, and then not shrink to fit, but remove, remove black bars. Okay, now that fills all of your screen. Thank you. Where I didn't, I didn't see who said that because my screen is real big right now. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, so you bring it back to the beginning, and now you hit play again. So we have the video. I mean the this title card. Is a picture. And then that. Okay. Now you can keep doing this. Obviously, I think you might get the hang of it so far. But you know, if you wanted another video clip, um, you can put it in. Uh, you can trim it and let's play it to see where we are. These are pictures of me and friends who traveled from the Bronx, New York to Los Angeles, California. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim the end a little bit. So where I've stopped, you just drag that little out point, the little editor, a little clipper here, and you say done. Now that's in there. Um, if you wanted, you know, again, this is not as sophisticated as iMovie. However, let's say this was our video at this point, and you wanted to put some music on it. This is a picture. Okay, so so the whole thing is about 20 seconds. Obviously, your videos probably are going to be longer. And again, we're available to help you in any way. But in this particular program, you can choose background music. There's also a custom audio. For this purpose right now, there's, I'll just put background music. And in the drop down menu, there's wait, there's things to choose here. Um, I don't know, let's say digital horizon. Let's see what that sounds like. And then you can choose, uh, change, I'm sorry, the volume of that music that will be, dis, will be heard under this entire video. Probably 100% is too much since she's talking. I'm going to do about 40% and, or, and see what that does. And then we'll play. This is a picture. And this, these were pictures of me and friends who traveled from the Bronx, New York to Los Angeles, California. Now, the nice thing about it honestly is and you know if you have a two minute video that's going to play that music for two minutes and it's going to figure out when to fade it out at the end there's not a lot of other control with it but it will figure out that stuff those durations for you and you really don't have to mess with the music too much um again iMovie is much more flexible but i thought this was a way to you know at least give you some background to at least kind of Put your thoughts in order, whether it's a graphic in the beginning, like we did, um, like I just did. And again, those are customizable. You can do different things with those. And then some, some interview clips, a photo with a little movement on it, which makes it nice. And then back to a, another video clip. Kevin, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Um, you said the background music. Can you pick the music that you want, or do they give you a, a you, certain amount of music to, to pick? No, from? You, no, you can. Um, and I'll give you one caveat also. So just for now, let me go back to this tab that says background music. That and again, these are these are canned pieces of music with different moods that are there. <clears throat> I'm going to say none. I'm going to remove it, mm -hmm. and then say done. The reason being, as you're building your video, when you use their version or their pieces of music. Um, if you added another clip to the timeline here, the storyboard, it would all, it doesn't know to keep doing the music. So you kind of have to do the music last, which 
you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But to answer your specific question, yeah, there's a custom audio tab here, and you add the audio file in there and then hit done. It's it's much like I'm just gonna hit done, but you can drag audio into it. Let me see if I can do that. Hang on. So I believe there's this piece. Uh I thought I could drag that. Hang on, sorry. Maybe it was why is this not dragging? Um, I guess add. I guess you I don't know. I thought you could drag it. But if you add it, so you click on add, and then that folder that I've been taking clips from and other things, it already has some music in there as an example. Um, I don't think it matters, but there's a way, you know, whatever just put it in that folder and then you'll be able to to do it. Um, this is going to be really loud, so let me just turn this down for a second. Okay. Um, what I'm not 100% sure on, because this program is new to me as well, to be very frank with you, I'm not sure how to make that, to put that under this whole duration. Um, I can research that more and get back to you, but um, I can only do it with the background music at this point. Okay. In other words, I am, um, well, let me try because I, although this for some reason, okay. So there's the piece, oh, I see. So I guess you have to do that. So did you see how, where this music was? In our 20 second video that we've built so far with the bl black and white graphic in the beginning, the sound bite of, of this lovely woman, Irma, and then the peace American flag, and then another clip of Irma. For some reason, it, it, it puts the, when I just chose that new piece of music that, I don't know if it was Gail, did you? I don't know who asked the question about music. Oh, Rita. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't have all my squares open over here. Um, it puts it right after it, right after that last thing. So if you wanted to bring that in the beginning, if you can see my, my storyboard timeline here, you bring that to the beginning of it and then drag it to the 20 seconds. Now it actually is under there. Maybe I do know how to do this. Um, so let's see if that's really from the beginning, that music. Okay, so it is there. This is a picture. Now, if you felt like that that audio was um too loud let me see how i can do this we go to we go to that again you right click on that piece of on that icon of the music or that mm -hmm. uh to the speaker thing i'm sorry just volume and then it gives you 100 percent or and i think i was in the 30s so let's make this just for an argument 25 percent of 20 and then hit done and then that should have lowered the audio on this whole thing. So, or the music, I should say. This is a okay. picture. That might be too little. I don't know if you guys can hear that as well, but that seems to be a kind of a good blend. Um, any good other, any questions right now? I know I don't know if I went through that too quickly, or if if um, you know there, there's more things to do there. Uh, but this is kind of the simple sort of layout and i i mean in, in some respects it's it's not bad um kevin can i ask are you able to do a second video layer drop, like yeah drop on top of right like on top of it that's what i'm not sure rich um you know in, in making in researching many video so just to give you guys some some background over the past several days we've been looking at ways to make the PC and Android and well, the PC world uh, easier, as easy as possible for all of you if you're using that, that platform. And there's certainly ways to download and to buy or to download free programs, but uh, there's millions of them, literally. And they all seem to, the reason we stuck with this one internal to Windows 10 is that it's free and um, you wouldn't have to download anything and you wouldn't have to spend money on when you do download one of them, it's free for like a week, which doesn't make sense for, you know, that we don't want to get anybody into spending monthly. Uh, I mean, honestly, I think you guys, for what most of us are planning on doing, this is plenty of editing capability and 
you know, you, we know that you're there to help us. Sure. Um, if, if we want, if we want to do something more complicated. I okay. mean, so I, I, I just want to jump in a little bit here, everybody, because we're going to have 15 minutes for questions. But I also wanted to make sure that Rich and Kevin just talk about the service that they're very kindly offering as part of our education. Yes. So, uh, if I can get us back on, am I um, sharing? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, oh, before I forget, so by now you probably all know what we mean by timeline. Well, and, and just remember that one we just showed shows it's called storyboard, but it's yes, which you're okay. also familiar with. It's it's basically the same idea. Uh, and you know what a storyboard is from what we've been talking about. Um, but that's what that was. So uh, this is being recorded, so you'll be able to refer back. You, you all have my Gmail, my personal email, because that's how I've been sending you the invitations, uh, unless you went straight from the calendar. But here's how to get hold of both of us. So if you have a Mac question or an Apple iPhone or anything like that, um, that's how you reach me. Any of the PC side, Android stuff, um, feel free to reach out to Kevin. So what we'd like to offer for, for through the month of September, if you don't have an editing uh, capability, and, but you shot something already with your phone, and if you can edit it with your phone, great, you're done. Um, but you still might have questions about what now. Um, feel free to reach out to us. If you would like to edit it in a more um, complex kind of edit, like we've been talking about, adding a graphic over top of some of you know somebody talking, it could be a a, a PowerPoint presentation, um, that sort of thing. But you don't have uh, a desktop um, or laptop computer, which makes that sort of thing a lot easier. Um, we're here to help. So through the month of September. If you send us your video and tell us what you're trying to do with it, um, we would like to edit that for you. Sure. So if it comes to that, um, please reach out to us. Yeah. Um, and as I said, if you can get us the video anytime before uh, September 30th, uh, we will have time to then try to put that together for you, working with you. Absolutely. You know, um, so we know how it's, you know, what your goal is. Um, and it'll be very helpful if you've already done your treatment because we'll know the general direction of what you're trying to accomplish. So please feel free to reach out to us through the month of September. That's so wonderful, Rich and, and Kevin. Thank you so oh, much. No problem. What a, what a wonderful offer. And everybody just, you know, this is so generous and, and oh. sweet. And, you know, and everybody should feel free to take them up on this offer because it'll, it'll make a big difference to what we can do with all of our videos. I'm very sure. proud of everybody for the work they're doing on this. And, and uh, thank you, Richard. And thank you, Kevin, for this. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. And yeah. now we have time for questions. But I don't want to miss Dale's question about music yeah. with um, how to load music. On, I think in the Apple world, right, Dale? Is that what you wanted? Um, I'm actually good. I didn't see the little notes that were sitting in the bottom corner of the screen. So I'm good. Oh, oh. OK. Great. Uh, I think Kate also had a question. Kate, did I did you get my chat back? Did you see that? Kate Sweeney, I think had a question. You're muted. I'm a theme, but I come up with Kate. I think you answered. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I have a question. Okay, but we're all good. I mean, so so there was I think there was a question about getting Android footage into a into a Mac, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because yeah. it's both. I, it's, I might have two separate sources of camera footage. Yeah, I I, I don't. I mean, it it. I think it should. Like I I personally have um. An and uh, a, a Pixel actually a, a Google Pixel, um it shoots um MP4 which is pretty you know, pretty um standard video format so yeah that you know just copy it however you can get it uh, yeah. into the mac will work uh, should work fine and then doing like a audio layback 
voiceover, how do you do, like, you can do that, right? Obviously, from editing. Um, if I record a separate voice. If you want to record a separate voice, there's an there's a voice there's an audio voice record feature. I believe I've never used it to be honest with you on my phone, but as long as you can make an audio record, um, yeah, that file would be also transferable to the Mac, you know, to the to the Mac world without without any yeah. issue. And again, you guys have our contact information and cell phone numbers. If you want to text or call or email, you can do all of that anytime. And I didn't know what I was doing, Athena, so I've done a workaround where I just actually videoed myself and then put an image over the video because I didn't know how to do a voice record on my phone. It yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah, bo both phones have uh, an app on their phone. Um, the, the, the Apple one is uh, Voice Memo, I think. Or yeah, I'm, look I'm looking at it right now, actually. Voice right something. Now. I mean, you just type in voice, you'll find it. Yeah. Um, and that gives you a way to record uh, right into your phone. Let me see what it's called these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, voice memo. Oh, and voice recorder. Um, and, and just just as an aside, on the Google in the Google Play Store, much like the Apps Store, you know, there's the Google Store. Um, there's a, a audio recording feature that's free, and you install it. So if you didn't have it already. Sorry, Rich. Yeah, no, same with the App Store. If there's another, you know, if, you're not, if you don't have it on your phone, um, there's... I mean, okay. I do, I do have that, but you had mentioned something about a microphone. That would be if, if somebody's doing the video because it didn't come out very, the audio was... Yeah, yeah we've talked about um, the next step up. If you're, if you're looking to invest and um, put an external mic on your phone. Uh, uh, there, I, I could make more of a list and send that to everybody. Or, or if, you, if you're interested, you know, if anybody's interested, just let us know. Um, we would have some recommendations. I will just say, again, on the Apple side, for years I used um, a product by iRig, it's called, and they make a handheld mic, they make a lavalier. Uh, lapel clip-on mic, um, and it, it worked pretty good with Apple. But in in both cases, there are probably it's a matter of just hopping online and researching, you know, which works with what. Because again, with in the Apple world now, of course, you have to have the Lightning um, because there's no more headphone jack, so it's got to be you know specifically for that whichever phone. Um, but I've, I've found some decent lapel mics in the $30 range, you know, because honestly, the stuff we, we in the professional industry, I mean, we're using $500 mics. So um, when I do stuff at home, I'm, I'm not buying that for, <laughs> so that's why I started looking at, you know, the $40 range, 30, 20, even just something that's going to get it off of so that you you know, you're not talking right into your phone. Um, uh, but that does takes a little research. But I mean, we're happy to put a little list together just for uh, some recommendations. Oh, but once you do, then yes, to that's the other thing I wanted to mention. Um, in the Apple world, uh, a lot of times, if you're using iCloud, then everything's going to your iCloud. And that's where you're going to find it. Um, when you, if you want to edit on your laptop. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is use the um, air, I mean, um, what is that called? Not airdrop. Yeah, thank you. you. Use something every day. You oh. just don't need the words anymore in your head. Uh, and that's a matter of, um, if I can show that real quick. Does anybody want to see that? Um, maybe that's a specific question that they could email us. Any any other general questions? Yeah. Maybe right now. I'll back off. No, no, I'm not, I'm not. Anyone? Don't be shy. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Um, so we are talking about a microphone. Yesterday I was watching Met Gala at, for one hour. They, they had opening on the on online. 
and uh, people who are on the video and the voice doesn't match. How can we avoid that? Let's say that one more time. Yeah, so, so the vi video they're show that we are watching, right? And the voice we are hearing doesn't match. Oh, it's out of we it call has a that, delay. We call that of sync. Ah, uh, uh, well, that shouldn't uh, depends how you re you mean to record you this this project for you for you guys. I mean, if you're shooting it with your phone, if you're filming with your phone, it shouldn't happen. If you're conducting a like, I don't know, maybe there might be times when you would be doing like a web, like a um, like a Zoom record, like interviewing someone remotely. Are you talking about that? Like, I guess that happens because uh, they're putting uh, video and voice separately. You know, it, on those webcasts or those webinars or whatever these live things have been happening since the pandemic, you know the tech, the technology, and the and the not to get too too into it, but the, you know the the bandwidth or the source of where it's coming from, um, or how you're watching it, depending on how many viewers are watching, that can affect that lag and the um, and the 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 sync issues, the audio and video sync sync issues where it's out of sync. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. You know what caused what you were seeing. I'm not sure what caused that. But um, I don't okay. think you're. I don't think you're going to run into that originating new stuff. You shouldn't anyway. Okay. I have another question. Yes, ma'am. When I receive this Zoom video, can I install it to the iMovie and I just clip off the because I use uh, I um, a Mac, so I don't need to know about Android part. To make, can I make it short? Saying that, can we clip the, you know, Zoom video? So, so you want to cut me out of this? Is what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean this this recording? <laughs> Whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. You'll you'll have. Good night, um, everybody. We can, <laughs> we can make the um, recording of this available or anything. Okay. Well, sure. Now, if, if that's how the Zoom video, for example, yeah. yeah, if that's how you're planning, and that was my question for you, um, for some of what you're planning uh, to do, are you planning to record a Zoom interview? Uh, that, then yes, once you say, once you, if you initiate the Zoom meeting and have the record function and are recording it, when the meeting is done, it then processes and takes a while depending on how long like this one's two hours this is going to take like an hour to process this video probably before i can even look at it um it's going to save it to my desktop or wherever i told in advance with in preferences where to save it to um just be aware you know where it's going to go so you're not searching because it makes a folder and then in that folder you'll find all these other files and you really just want the video file the mp4 that it made um, so say like Zoom, whatever the name of your meeting was, .mp4. Uh, that file, yes, that you can just import that right into iMovie and just start chopping. Absolutely. Yeah, have fun. So, Thank you. So you would have to be the host. Like I would have to be the host, right? Yeah, or, or if somebody else was the host, I think they can enable it so that in, in the preferences so that anybody can record, I think. I, I forget. But um, somewhere in there, in preferences, that's where it'll tell you who's able to record. If you're the host, it's, it, I think it defaults to you to record. But I'm pretty sure the host, in initiating the Zoom meeting in preferences, uh, can tell, um, you know, can make it so that anybody can record. Um, this one's recording right now, so I wonder if I can check where. I'm assuming it's in preference. I see on my screen. I see recording, so I know it's recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but not because I set it up originally to automatically record. Right. But that's what I would need to do if I'm doing um, Zoom meetings. I then I would if I initiate it, I'll record it. Or you're saying, click on preference, and then see who is in it, and then I can record from them. 
if if somebody else if it's somebody else's meeting, right? They have to. I think they need. To. I I I clicked the recording and it said, "Please uh, reco request recording permission to the host." Yeah, right. so it has to. Be that, that's how if somebody else is, has initiated the meeting, and you do want to record, if you click record, they'll get the little message. Let's see, that popped up here. Yeah, yeah that just prevents people from recording a meeting without, 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 without your permission. Right, without permission. But if you're going to be at it, if, if anybody's doing um, these interviews over, the, over Zoom or one of these applications, um, you'll actually get the recording of both of you, like you asking the question and then, you know, how it switches in a web, in a web in R with two, if it's two people. Um, you'll see that, correct, Rich? You'll see that switch back and forth where the, where the video will re record both sides. Uh, it depends on how you set up your... Oh, you can just have it stay on them, right? Yeah. On the person you're interviewing? Right. Can okay. you all see my screen? Yeah. So, so right now I've got it. I just happen to have this um, showing our thumbnails off to the side. If I collapse that, it, it won't be in the recording. Um, but all of that is, again, if, if you're not familiar with the, the Zoom uh, architecture here, under Zoom, uh, in a Mac, it's zoom.us on the top left next to the Apple, click and drag down to preferences. Um, I'm assuming on a PC, same thing. There's also settings, this little cog wheel. That's also how you get to these settings. Um, so, yeah, I think originally I set it up in here. So recording tab. Um, gives you all these options. And the other thing is I always record locally to my hard drive so I know where it's going. I've never used the cloud option. Uh, we have a, a, a relatively good amount of room in there, but I just never like the idea of it going somewhere other than where I control it. So I tell it to go right to my, I set up something on my hard drive. You could plug in an external drive and tell it to go there instead if you wanted to. Um, like if you thought it was going to be an eight hour meeting. <laughs> but most things, you know, if, as long as you have room on your hard drive, um, which you may also want to check. Does everyone know how to check how much room they have on their hard drive? Uh, I have so many things open, I can't even get to mine right now. But that's some, something to, to consider like how much room you have. But if you're only doing a 10 minute recording of an interview or something, you should be okay. But it's not a bad idea to control where that goes, just so you're able to find it again. So make a folder for it specifically. Uh, as far as recording, again, if, if somebody else initiated the meeting and they aren't recording, and you click on that record button, and you're just gonna, you know, make sure they know. Do you mind if we record this? And then they have to enable it. Okie doke. So uh, we're at two o'clock. Um, and thank you so much, Rich and Kevin. I I feel like I understand things much better than I did in terms oh, of editing. Yeah, this is great. This was so wonderful. Oh good. Um, so I will. Um, Amanda and I will immediately send out Rich and Kevin's contact info. Mm -hmm. So everybody has it. So you can um, feel free to ask individual questions. And just a reminder, if you want help editing your videos, get in video and your, your treatment by the end of the month. And these guys very, very kindly offered to help us on the individual videos. Mm -hmm. There you have it. Thank you, everyone. Yay, thank you. 